All right, our last little example of this. Uh, this one is a little bit different and probably the hardest of all the d different examples I've given you. Uh, as you can see, we have a rational inequality. So uh, what we need to do is get it compared to zero first. So I need to get uh, that two to the other side. So I'll subtract two. So I get x plus one over x plus three. And then minus two is greater than or equal to now zero. Now what I've got to do is I need to get a common denominator. So the denominator here is 1. So what I'm going to do is I need to multiply the top and the bottom by x plus 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and say negative 2 times x plus 3 over uh, x plus 3. So as you can see, I multiplied the top and the bottom by x plus 3 in the hopes of being able to get a common denominator. Well, that's going to give me x plus 1 from this numerator, and this is going to give me negative 2x minus 6. And then our denominator is still going to be the same. When I put those together, what I should get is negative x and then minus 5 over x plus 3. Right, so now what I've done, as you can see, I got it compared to zero, so I got zero on one side. I got one term on the left side, so now I can find my critical numbers. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll set the numerator equal to zero to find the zeros. And I'll add x to both sides. So I get x equal to negative five. And then uh, I need to find the undefined values by setting my denominator equal to zero. So x plus three, and that should give me negative three. So now that we have found our two critical numbers, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set those uh, equal to zero. Well, just kidding, I'm gonna put them on the number line. So I'll say negative three would be here, and negative five we can say is here. And as you can see, what that's going to do is divide my graph into three sections. So I'm going to try one value in each section. So in this section right here, I can use negative 6. I can use negative 10 or negative 1 million. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go plug it in right here. So into this one, I use negative 6. So that's going to make that a positive 6 minus 5 is still a positive. And then down here, it's going to give me a negative. So a positive divided by a negative will give me a negative sign. So what we're going to assume is everything in that section will be negative. Uh, I'm going to try negative 4 now. So negative 4 will give me 4 minus 5, which is a negative, divided by negative 1. So negative divided by a negative, as you guys well know, is a positive. So we're going to assume that everything in this section is positive. And then lastly, I can use 0. 0 will be negative 5 divided by a positive 3. When you divide those two things, you should end up with a negative. Now, of course, what we need to do is go back and look at our problem and see what are they actually asking for. So we'll come back here and we'll say, well, it wants our uh, polynomial expression, our rational expression, rather, to be greater than or equal to 0. So what that means is positive or zero. So what we're going to do is we'll find that section. There's only one section of our graph that meets that. So what we'll do is we'll say negative five comma negative three. Now here's one place where it gets a little tricky. Okay, zeros can be included. The critical numbers cannot. Our zero is negative five. So we'll put a bracket around that. But then this negative three was the value to make it undefined. So therefore we'll just put a parentheses around that. So that's polynomial and rational uh, inequalities. Just remember to follow the rules. Get zero on one side if rational combined into one term. Find the critical numbers, zeros undefined values, and test each section created by the graph to determine whether it's positive or negative if you don't know what the graph looks like. Good luck.